This video is going to focus on cell division for bacterial species um, and have you do some practice problems related to cell division and generation time. So this image shows a starting parent cell up here at the top and the process it goes through to create two daughter cells. For bacteria, this process of cell division is called binary fission. So you'll notice this single cell, okay? It's got the chromosome, it's got floating ribosomes, it's surrounded by a plasma membrane and a cell wall. And as it prepares to divide, notice that it gets elongated. Okay, so it's enlarging that cell membrane, the cell uh, wall, its overall volume, right? But I also want you to pay attention to these little notches right here that are forming, okay? This is eventually going to become the septum, which is gonna essentially form and divide the cell in half, okay? So the other thing I want you to pay attention to is notice right here where the original host chromosome is attached, right, um, to that membrane. And then once that chromosome has been replicated in picture three, notice the new chromosome, okay, is attached elsewhere on the opposite side of the cell. And this is really important because at the end of the day, the two daughter cells each need their own copy of DNA. So they have to, the cell has to ensure that one copy of the chromosome stays on the left-hand side and the other copy stays on the right-hand side. And so by kind of adhering to that membrane site is gonna be how they make sure that happens. But other things within the cell like the ribosomes just kind of get distributed randomly to the two halves. But notice that the septum wall is growing inwards, right? It's slowly kind of pinching these two, two cells or more like walling it off. So um, if you look down the fourth part of the picture, okay, the septum is completely synthesized, okay, through the middle of this cell. And the cell actually is going to repair it, right, to make sure that it's got a complete intact membrane and cell wall. Um, and then the cells actually separate. Okay, now some separate completely like this, but as we've talked about in lab, um, some cells don't completely dissociate with each other, rather they remain partially attached. And that's how we get strepto or diplo um, or staphylo cell arrangements, okay? So here is a video. Oh, so sorry, y'all, hold on. There we go. Video. I don't know if you'll be able to hear the sound. Bacteria reproduce very simply and rapidly by doubling the contents and splitting each other. Just one bacteria dividing every couple minutes prepares nearly 5,000 million million bacteria. So you, what you were seeing is how quickly bacteria can divide. Now, the process of binary fission takes on average about 20 minutes for um, one round of cell division, but if you could hear the sound, they were saying that um, um, one cell dividing, hold on, the captioning is gone. There we go, sorry. Um, on the video, you were seeing one round of cell division happening about every 20 minutes. And so they said that in 24 hours, a single cell could become it was like 5 billion billion cells, which I've never really heard a number said that way, but basically you would get a lot of cells over a short period of time. And so this is just a visual representation of how the cell population doubles over time. Okay, so it starts with one cell, and then after a round of binary fission, we have two cells. After that next round, each of those two will divide, so we'll have four cells, and so on and so forth. And so you can express this logarithmically here um, with a base number of two. Okay, so we use a base of two because the cell doubles after each round, okay? So two raised to zero represents our initial um, number of bacteria. In this case, we're starting from one, okay? But then after one round of division, 
notice that it's now phase two exponent number one. Okay, and that would just go on for each round of division. Oops, sorry, got ahead of myself. And so this is just showing you how cells grow exponentially. You can also say they grow logarithmically um, because initially it doesn't sound like the population is changing very quickly, right? One cell becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight. But all of a sudden, right, once you get to a bit higher of a number, it goes from 1,000 to 2,000, 2,000 to 4,000. And eventually, in 20 minutes, it can go from 1 million cells to 2 million cells then 2 million to 4 million. So that's a very drastic increase. So we actually have to use a logarithmic scale when we're trying to graph it because of just how quickly that number um, increases. So here's another visual um, showing binary fission. But what we really want to drive home here is the idea of generation time, which is how long it takes for the culture to double in size. So 20 minutes is on average, but it does vary from species to species. So you can see E. coli has the typical roughly 20 minutes for a generation time, but there's an organism called Mycobacterium. It's a, it's a genus actually. Let's see if I get this pen to work. Mycobacterium. Of course, I'm not using my pen, can you tell? So mycobacteria is the genus, um, and it causes things like leprosy, which is this specific organism. There's also mycobacteria tuberculosis, which causes tuberculosis. And mycobacteria has an extremely long generation time. As you can see here, um, rather than 20 minutes, it's taking 14 days. And so it can take a really long time to diagnose somebody with a mycobacteria infection because it just takes so long for a culture to grow and to do any tests and to do any form of analysis. And so the mycobacterium is actually such a slow poke because in its um, cell wall, it has something called mycolic acid. And it's this waxy substance in the cell wall that just, it takes a really long time to synthesize and go through the, the cell division process, okay? So anytime the population size doubles, we call that the generation time, okay? And so the things we talked about previously, those physical and chemical requirements are going to also impact the generation time of an organism. So let's do a practice problem real quick. Um, so we're saying that a starting culture has a generation time of 20 minutes. Originally, the population has a thousand cells. So how many cells are there going to be in 20 more minutes? Well, that's one generation time. So that means that the population is going to double. So 1000 times two is going to be 2000 cells. Well, now 20 minutes later, all 2,000 of those cells are going to double. So we're going to have 4,000 cells. And then again, in another 20 minutes, that's another generation time. So we'll end up with 8,000 cells. Okay. So another practice problem, kind of showing you how to kind of table it out if that's what you need. So the initial population is 5,000 per milliliters of culture generation time of one hour. So how many cells will there be after four hours? So notice we've got our T0 here saying that we're starting with 5,000 cultures. It's gonna double every hour. Okay, so we put every generation time across the top. So now we're just gonna do the math. So 5,000 will double to 10,000. 10,000 will double to 20,000. 20,000 will double to 40,000 and 40,000 will double to 80,000. So that's how many cells we would have. And it's technically 80,000 per milliliter. It's a lot of cells, right? Um, in only a couple of hours. So again, that's why it's that logarithmic growth. All right, the last slide for this particular video is just an extra practice problem, okay? So our initial population, so that's gonna be T0, is gonna be 3,000 cells per milliliter. We've got a generation time of 30 minutes and we need to get up to three hours. So we're gonna do 30 minutes, one hour, 
one and a half hours, two hours, two and a half. And it looks like we're, we don't have enough room here, three hours. Okay, so then again, for every um, generation time, our population is going to double. So our 3,000 becomes 6,000, which then becomes 12,000, which becomes 24,000, which becomes 48,000. I need a calculator now. Sorry, please hold. Um, this becomes 96,000. And then that is going to become 192,000 cells per milliliter. Okay, that's the end of this video. Let me know if you have any questions.